Okay. Tank, Charlie, and I are back for the ending of the one and only Ivan. So, Ivan has a girlfriend. Tanky, what do you think about that? Tanky's excited. All right. Let's see what's happening. Let's see what's happening, Tanky. All right. Talk. Gorillas aren't chatty like humans, prone to gossip and bad jokes. But now and again, we swap a story under the sun. One day, oh, we read this page. We'll read it again. It's my turn. I tell my troop about Mac and Ruby and Bob and Stella and Julia and George, about my mother and father and sister. When I am done, they look away, silent. Kenyani moves closer. Her shoulder brushes mine, and we let the sun soak into our fur together. The top of the hill. I've explored every nook and cranny of this place, except for a hill at the far end where workers have been repairing a wall. They're finally gone. They've left behind a fresh white brick and a mound of black dirt. While the other ladies in the morning sun, I want to explore the hilltop. They've been there before and I have not. Everything is still fresh to my eyes. I take my time going uphill, savoring the feel of grass on my knuckles. The breeze carries the shouts of children and the drowsy hum of bumblebees. Near the top of the hill is a low limb tree, the kind my sister would have loved. The wall is endless, clean and white, stretching far down to the habitats beyond. It's high and wide, carefully built to keep us in and others out. This is, af after all, still a cage. It rained last night and the pile of dirt is soft to the touch. I scoop up a handful and breathe, breathe in the loamy smell. It's a rich brown color, heavy and cool in my palm, and the walls wait like an endless blank billboard. Oh, what do we think Ivan's gonna do? I have an idea what I think he's gonna do. The wall. It's a big wall, but it's a big pile of dirt, and I'm a big artist. I slap a handful of mud on the warm cement. I make a handprint. I tap my nose with a muddy finger and I make a nose print. I slide my palms up and down. The mud is thick and hard to use, but I keep moving and scooping and spreading. I don't know what I'm making and I don't care. I make swoops and swirls and thick lines, figures and shapes, lights and shadow. I'm an artist at work. When I'm done, I step back to admire my work, but it's a large canvas and I'd like to get a better view. I go to the thick limb tree and grab the lowest branch. I try to swing my legs. Ugh, I land hard. I'm too big to climb, I suppose. I try again anyway, and this time I pull myself onto the first limb, gasping for breath. One more limb, two, and I can't go any farther. Perched halfway up the tree, I see my troop still dozing contentedly. I take in the wall, splattered and splashed with mud. Not much color, but lots of movement. I like it. It feels dreamy and wild, like something Julia might have made. From my seat in the tree, I can see beyond the wall. I see giraffes and hippos. I see, or see deer with legs like delicate twigs. I see a bear snoozing in a hollow log. I see elephants. Safe. She's far away, belly deep in tall grass with others by her side. Ruby. She's here, Stella, I whisper. Ruby safe, just like I promised. I call to Ruby, but the wind tugs at my words and I know she'll never hear me. Still, Ruby pauses for a second, her ears spread wide like tiny sails. Then with lumbering grace, she moves on through the grass. Silverback. It's a cloudy evening, chilly and drizzly. Dinner is on its way, but I don't care. At night we sleep in our den, but I'm always the last to head inside. I've been inside long enough. This time of day, there aren't many visitors, just a few stragglers leaning on the wall that separates us. They point, take a couple of photos, then head over to the nearby giraffes. One of the keepers is beckoning. Reluctantly, I turn to go. Out of the corner of my eye, I see someone running. I pause. It's a girl with dark hair lugging a backpack. A man follows behind, racing to catch up. Ivan, the girl yells, Ivan. Who do we think it is? It's Julia. 
I scramble to the edge of the wide moat that skirts the wall. Julie and George wave to me. I dash back and forth, hooting and grunting, doing a gorilla dance of happiness. Calm down, says a voice. You're behaving like a chimp. I freeze. I know, can you believe it, Tank? A tiny, nut brown, big eared head pops out of Julia's backpack. Nice place, Bob says. Tank, I think you knew it was Bob the dog, right? You've gotten to love him. Bob, I say, it's really you, in the flesh. How, where? I can't seem to find any word. George's job at the zoo doesn't start till next month. So he and Julia made an arrangement. She's walking three extra dogs to cover my food. And get this, they're all poodles. You said you didn't want a home, I say. Yeah, Bob says, but Julia's mom likes my company. So I figure I do everybody a favor. It's a win-win. Julia pushes Bob's head back inside her backpack. You're not supposed to be here, she reminds him. Ivan looks Great, doesn't he, Jules? George asks. Stronger, happier even. Julia holds up a little photo, but it's too far away for me to see. It's Ruby, Ivan. She's with other elephants now because of you. I know I want to tell her. I saw with my own eyes. We stare across the expanse that separates us. After a while, George pats Julia's arm. Time to go, Jules. Julia gives a wistful smile. Bye, Ivan. Say hello to your new family. She turns to George. Thank you, Dad. For what? For, she gestures towards me. For this. They turn to leave. The lamps that light the zoo pathways blink on, blanketing the world with yellow light. I can just make out Bob's little head sticking out of Julia's backpack. You are the one and only Ivan, he calls. I turn and then twist turn toward my family my life my home mighty silverback i whisper there's ivan the mighty silverback the end so i hope you have enjoyed ivan um there isn't supposed to be a movie about the one and only ivan coming out this summer so we will see what happens with that. Um, some movies are going straight to um, pay, you know, to pay-per-view at this point. Um, so we'll see if we can do something special around the opening of that as a group, um, one way or, or another, when the movie does eventually come out. Because I've really enjoyed reading this with you. So I hope you have enjoyed reading it with me also. So as a um, Mrs. Messer is going to do our next read aloud. So I'm going to send out a Google form probably tomorrow that um, has you vote on which book you like. So have your mom and dad take a look um, at that when it comes in their email. So take care, I miss you, and I hope you enjoyed the one and only Ivan as much as Tank, Charlie, and I did, right Tank? All right, bye guys.